The little fox was lost. He walked, and walked till it was dark and then he found a grass hill to lay down and rest his sleepy head. The fox woke up to the ground covered in frost. Oh no he groaned. My paws are going to be so cold, what am I going to do? He walked, and walked in the morning light until he came across a shed. I will rest in here. He thought it looked so nice and warm. Inside the shed there were an old blanket in a bundle on the floor. The fox lay down and curled up until he heard someone opening the door. The fox looked startled when he heard a small voice. Hello little fox please don't be scared. My name is Cassandra. Cassandra is seven years old and doesn't have many friends to play with as she lives a long way from the village. We can be friends little fox, and you can stay in my shed, said Cassandra. I would like that very much said the fox while running in circles excited. Cassandra went inside her house and came back with some socks and a scarf which she put the socks on the fox's paws and said these will keep your paws warm, and this scarf will keep your neck warm, and they huddled together to stay warm. Cassandra, tea is ready, come in and eat before it gets cold shouted Cassandra's daddy. You better go said little foxy before your daddy finds me in here and makes me go away. I will be back soon, Cassandra spoke gently, and I will bring you some milk and food too for your supper. Out of the shed Cassandra went. Good heavens Cassandra what have you been doing in the shed, there is nothing in there for you to play with said Cassandra's daddy. Come on now let's go eat dinner before it goes cold. After dinner, Cassandra tried to sneak out to the shed until mummy spoke, bath time Cassandra and straight to bed with a story for you as it's been a long day and you're tired. I don't want to go to bed yet mummy can I please stay up a while longer and play? Oh. Cassandra you can have 30 minutes extra after your bath then straight to bed. Yes mummy thank you mummy, said Cassandra as she gave her mummy a hug. Cassandra couldn't go to the shed as mummy and daddy were playing games with her. After a couple of hours Cassandra woke up, she sneaked downstairs, poured some milk in an old dish and opened a tin of cat food and took them out to the shed. Hello little fox I've brought you some food and milk, I couldn't come earlier so I have sneaked out now. Cassandra sneaked back in her house and took a blanket from her bedroom and tiptoe tiptoe down the stairs she went trying not to make a sound. Cassandra and the fox curled up under the blanket in the shed and fell to sleep. It was morning when they woke to the sounds of the birds chirping and Cassandra had to go home before mummy and daddy realized she was not in her bed. Creak went the door as it opened, tiptoe tiptoe up the stairs she went trying not to make a sound till daddy spoke, Cassandra where have you been young lady? I hope you haven't been playing in the shed again. I'm going to put a lock on it today. It isn't a place for you to play, but daddy no you can't, daddy I like playing in the shed, please don't put a lock on it daddy, Cassandra said crying. Daddy didn't know what all the fuss was about till he entered the shed and there he saw the little fox. Daddy smiled as he seen the fox and said you're just a young one you, oh you must be lost and far away from your family, we can't have you all alone said daddy. Daddy carried the little fox into the house and laid him besides the fire and said we shall call you baby foxy because you're just a baby. Cassandra was very happy she was allowed to keep the fox. They went outside and played together chasing the ball, they had so much fun. Baby foxy was Cassandra's best friend now and they played together all day. When Cassandra came out of the school the next day, Baby Foxy was waiting with daddy for her and all the girls and boys came over and said oh he is so cute and stroked the little fox. Cassandra made a lot more friends and at the classes show and tell the following day Cassandra took in Baby Foxy. Baby Foxy got into so much trouble he chewed the school's pencils he knocked over the paint pots he knocked over the bins and the rubbish came tumbling out. He even chewed the books in the book corner and spilt milk on the classroom floor. All the boys and girls in the class were laughing at the mischievous fox as he were getting more and more into trouble, but Cassandra didn't find it very funny. She was upset with Baby Foxy as today was supposed to have been her special day with show and tell but Baby Foxy went and spoiled it. Baby Foxy has paint all over his fur, pencil shavings stuck to the paint, he was in a mess and the teacher was cross at all the mess he had made. The little fox wasn't allowed in the classroom anymore. Later that night while at home daddy put baby foxy in the bath and the trouble didn't stop, baby foxy didn't like it in the bath so he splashed and jumped and soaked the bathroom floor. He chewed the shampoo bottle and Cassandra's mermaid dolls for the bath, he really was a mischievous little fox. Baby foxy and Molly the cat and Cassandra chased each other round the house till it was bedtime and the little fox had to go in the shed. 
Oh said baby foxy I don't want to sleep in the shed I promise I will be good. Can I please sleep in the house tonight? Cassandra's daddy said no. The shed is where you are to sleep. We don't want any more trouble of you. All night long, baby foxy whined at the shed door. And whined and whined as he were alone and wanted to sleep near Cassandra. He whined till he fell asleep curled at the shed door. Cassandra went off to school with daddy and baby foxy walking at the side of her and she gave baby foxy a kiss on his head and said gently I will see you later baby foxy, you're my best friend. Cassandra and baby foxy and Molly the cat, all played together in the garden, chasing each other and chasing the ball, it was fun and laughter, Cassandra was having so much fun she loved baby foxy so much. It was Cassandra's 8th birthday today and she were having a party and all her friends from class were coming. There was balloons and cake, and jelly, and sandwiches with crisps and ice cream and lots of party games being played, baby Foxy was being good and loved the attention and strokes off the children. Cassandra had a fantastic day and waved goodbye to her friends as they left to go home. There was a lot of tidying up to do now so baby Foxy and Cassandra played on the grass chasing each other. That night, the shed door didn't lock properly so baby Foxy made his way out. It was so dark he didn't know where he was going and ended up getting lost. Away from Cassandra's house he walked, and walked up the long dark path till he got tired, and laid down to rest. Baby Foxy was sad, he whined for Cassandra but nobody heard him, he wanted to go back home but couldn't find his way. The following morning when daddy went to the shed, he noticed baby Foxy was gone, and he knew Cassandra would be heartbroken without her little furry friend. He went off in search of the little Foxy, he walked what seemed like miles till there in the grass, daddy seen baby foxy lying there asleep. Oh my baby foxy daddy said, I thought I had lost you, I'm so glad I have found you as Cassandra and myself would be heartbroken if you were not around anymore. Baby foxy jumped up and ran to daddy and licked his face with excitement to see him, and they went back home, and from that day, baby foxy never slept in the shed again, he was allowed to sleep in the living room under the fire and they all lived happily ever after. The End